A lot of people say, can we have a two-party system? That's the ideal. That's how many developed countries work. That's what you should aim for. Change of government from team, the first party to the second, and then from the second to come back, and then you are considered to have matriculated. But how could this happen in Singapore that we have two parties? I can imagine several scenarios. First, the society splits based on race or religion. You have one party representing one race or religion, another party representing another race or religion. That's the worst possible scenario for Singapore, and we've done our best to make sure that it never comes about. Because if you're split on race or religion, you're not just going to have political quarrels, you're going to divide the society and... That's the end for Singapore. The second possibility is that you divide on class lines. We don't get our econo economic policies right, or maybe just the world trends are such. The rich get richer, the poor don't make progress. After a while, the poor lose hope in the system. The rich lose interest in the rest of society. And they say, the, so one side says, tax me less, let me keep my wealth. The other side says, give me more transfer more welfare, more goodies, more benefits. And you have two parties forming, one representing one group, the other one representing the other group, rich and poor. And that's how, I mean, highly oversimplified, but that's how things roughly work in many countries, like Britain, where you have the Conservatives and the Labour Party, and now the Liberals, Lib Dems, somewhere in the middle. Or in the US, where you've got the Democrats who are representing more of the working class, and the Republicans, who represent more of the well-off people. But I don't think that's a good outcome either. We are working hard to prevent this because I think we should try and, to the maximum extent that we can, align all the interests of Singaporeans and make sure that one party can represent you, whether you are the CEO or whether you are the taxi driver. The third possibility is that we split on policy grounds. You argue that this set of policies will be best for Singapore to grow, promoting MNCs. They argue that, no, I don't want MNCs. Sending them all away and depending on Singaporeans and Singapore companies is a way to grow, and we can't reconcile and we split and we argue over the policies and fight it out in the polls. I think it's, that could happen, but it's not so likely because the PAP is a pragmatic party and we are ready to take in good ideas. And if you look at it at a high level, frankly, the range of feasible options for Singapore is not that wide. So it's possible it could happen, but it would mean that something has gone wrong too. But the most important reason why a two-party system is not workable is because we don't have enough talent in Singapore to form two A teams. To form two really first-class teams to govern Singapore really well. More than any other country, Singapore needs exceptionally able leadership to tackle challenges and to minimize the risks for our country. We are small, we are vulnerable, with a mediocre government, other countries may muddle through and have to muddle through, but Singapore will fail. The most effective way to get a two-party system, if you really want to do it, is to split the PAP in two, because the talent is there, it's gathered. We, <laughs> uh, we will have two persons. I choose one, you choose one. I choose one, you choose one. Okay, now we have two teams. Now we play, toss the coins. We seriously considered making the PAP two parties, not that way, but in principle, but we didn't do it. Because we couldn't solve one problem. How can you make two teams, each one as good as the original one team which we had, which took really what would have been the best players from both teams. Or to put it in very 
hard and direct, tangible terms, where can you find two finance ministers and two defense ministers? I have one finance minister and one defense minister. If you have a spare one somewhere, please let me know. Why do I choose these two? Because these are two of the most difficult jobs in the cabinet to fill. In finance, you have to make judgments on taxes affecting all Singaporeans, on expenditures affecting all ministries, on the budget. You're talking about $50 billion of expenditure every year, as well as on our reserves, GIC, Tamase, MAS, and others, adding up to more than 100 billion US dollars. To find one of them is not easy. To find two of them, you must really do a baby. It's the same with defense. In a, in a curiously opposite way, because finance is about money and is very difficult, and defense is very difficult because it is not about money. Because the bottom line is intangible. Security, risk, threats, judgment. What is worth spending on? What is worth investing on? Which is the right aeroplane to buy? How many ships do you need? Which kernels to make general? How to shape the SAF? Which threats are getting serious? When do I recommend to mobilize the SAF? When do I decide I must deploy and defend? Can you easily find anybody off the street to do that sort of job? Very, very difficult. So therefore, I think one team get the best people together, fill each job with the best man. If we split it into two teams, then whichever one is in charge, the government is going to be weaker and the chances of something going wrong will go up. Definitely, even if things don't go wrong, standards will go down. And that's why I and all my predecessors have gone out of our way to scour the land for talent to join the team. And every election, we have 20-odd candidates become new MPs, and out of these, on average, I did a count over the last five or six elections, three make it, about three, make it to become minister. But we have 14 ministries to fill. And then on top of that, you need some supervising ministers, some DPM, some senior ministers, because you need some additional experience and oversight of the system. Of the system. So just, just say 14 ministries to fill, and I can get three New ministers each term. You do the math. 14 divided by 3 means, on average, each minister has to serve at least four terms. So over the weekend, SM Go expressed his personal view that perhaps in future, ministers should serve only two terms. But I think that's not possible because, simply because of the numbers. We are not able to generate the talent in order to produce those numbers of people who are able to do the job competently to the satisfaction of Singaporeans at that rate. 